I had an interesting question posed on a recent video that I'd done on Corsair's case, and I want to talk to you about it because it's potentially interesting in terms of the wiring of fans in your system and things you might not have thought about when doing so. And indeed, perhaps I should have considered it and mentioned it as something to think about. But it's also interesting because it speaks to manufacturers' logic in how they set things up ready for you to do your build. So I'll explain more about what I mean. But Josh Levinson posted this comment, and I want to thank him for it, basically saying, you see the front three fans are daisy-chained together, and you can plug them all into one PWN header on the motherboard, but I thought these fans have a power draw of 0.45 amps each, and almost all motherboard PWM headers support one amp at most, so wouldn't three of them be too much for a single PWM header? Now, this is interesting because... If you don't know already, Corsair's for cases that support RS fans, like the one behind me, for example. So this has three of those same RS fans on it, the reverse blade fans. And the comment was made on a Frame 5000D, which is the same logic. Now I have those three fans in the case, daisy chained together, so they're all connected up together. And then they supply two extension leads, one for the RGB and one for the fan power, with the intention that you connect them to the motherboard. So you plug the fan power into a system fan header or chassis fan header and then the RGB connection goes into a 5R RGB header. I made an assumption and even if you look at Corsair's guidance on how to set these fans up and the cases that you should just plug it into a fan header and it'd be fine. However if you look at the specs Josh is in some ways right because the fans actually draw 0 0.4 not 0 0.45 0 0.4 amps each which means that individually obviously add up to over one amp more than one amp draw on them if you use the rs 140s they're 0 0.45 amps so a little bit more so if you had three of those chained together that'd have more of an impact but the 120s are 0 0.4 and if you look at the motherboard specs you might well find that again josh is right so that motherboard can only have one amp per header so in theory, if you've put three of those fans together, the RS reverse blade or standard blade fans together and connect them to a motherboard header, then you're trying to draw more power from that header than you should be, which is obviously not ideal. Now, there's some caveats to that. One is that not all motherboards are built the same. CPU headers and CPU optional headers allow more power draw as does the AIO pump header. So if you're using those, they don't need to worry necessarily. So for example, in this build, I've got RS fans in the rear connected to a radiator then connected to the CPU fan header and the CPU optional fan header. So there's not necessarily a problem there. And also some motherboards actually allow for higher draw. So I researched my build, which has a Stealth X870E motherboard in it from Gigabyte and that allows two amp draw per header so there's no worries there but it's worth checking I think it's important to know this if you're concerned about these sorts of things about whether you're doing it right and it's you know it's not something you necessarily think about because you might have just taken the case seen the fans seen the connections and plugged them in maybe watch my videos maybe read Corsair's guides or other case manufacturers, because it's not just Corsair doing this, other case manufacturers will include fans in the system that daisy chain together than just have two connectors. And you'll make the assumption that you should just plug them into the motherboard. And the brand obviously wants you to do that, but there's no warning about, hold on a minute, you might be using more power than you should be. Now, that's the consideration, that's the potential problem. However, I will say in all the builds that I've done, where I've done that, where I've connected multiple fans to a single header, so these bottom three fans and the top three fans are separately connected to different system fan headers on this motherboard, and I've checked this motherboard only supports one amp, and yet as you can see there's no problem, there's not been any problems during gaming, there's not been any problems with benchmarking and testing. I've not seen any sort of longer term issues either. So there's potential for there to be a problem, it's only marginally over that one amp probably somewhere in the region of 1.3 or 1.2 depending on you know what fans you're putting in there so it's not massively over there and it hasn't caused major issues whether it will or not i don't know i can't say but if you are concerned about it there are solutions you could use a powered fan hub instead so you've got 
various different fan hubs that you can get that will power the fans separately from the motherboard and they use SATA power on them for example I've shown thermal right fan controllers in the past that allow you to do it Corsair has the Commander Duo now which you can use which I've got a separate video on you can connect the fans to that and then that's powered separately as well either via SATA power or connected up to the IQ Link system hub which is then PCIe power so you can find solutions to it if you are concerned but the point of this video is to highlight the fact that you might want to be thinking about the fans you're connecting and the specs of your motherboard and how much power the fans are meant to draw versus how much power your fan headers should actually be putting out or the maximum the motherboard manual says. Now you often have to go to the specific website for your motherboard, find the manual, download the manual, search through the pages and then find the table that shows you how much the power draw is, which is a bit of a faff because it's not just straight on the motherboard website. So it's not easy to find necessarily. It's a little bit of extra research in order to look it up and check. But it's an interesting question and an interesting problem because of whether it is actually a problem or not, I don't know. It doesn't seem to be currently. Is it? Could it be? Let me know in the comments if you think it is. I've asked for Corsair's guidance on this and what they suggest. But as I said, it's not a Corsair exclusive problem. I've seen plenty of other cases with three ARGB fans connected together that they expect you to connect directly to the motherboard and it isn't causing issues as you can see like I said in fact all the fans in this system are connected directly to the motherboard AIO to the CPU fan headers these to the system fan headers there's not been a problem in cases where I've done more fans I think the frame 5000D I did a lot I did uh, six intake no eight intake and then four exhaust and those were all connected to the motherboard as far as I remember and there was no problems there but it's interesting nonetheless don't you think let me know what you think whether I'm thinking about it too much or whatever let me know in the comments and also check out the links in the description to related content especially about the commander duo for example which might solve the problem if you're concerned about it this has been the provoke prawn thanks very much for watching You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.